In this video, we're going to give a brief introduction to writing style for engineers. If you'd like more information or fuller examples, then please see our other video on the same topic. Style is acting in an appropriate way for the context. In this video, we're talking about engineering styles writing in a British university context. Styles about getting a balance between on the one hand being too informal and the other hand being too too formal um, and that sounding forced. We'll look first at being too informal. There are various things that you need to avoid. The first is vague language and um, particularly words like something, anything and stuff. You should also avoid being too emotional, so saying things like surprisingly or unfortunately. You should avoid being too chatty or too personal using we, I or our. Often the passive is used instead. You should take care in the words that you choose, in particular um, avoiding two word verbs such as go up when there's a single word with the same meaning, in this case increase. You shouldn't use short linking words like and, for, and, nor, but, or, yet, or so after a full stop. These are absolutely fine used after a comma, but for academic style, they shouldn't be used after a full stop. Instead, you should use one of the longer linking words with the same meaning. For example, instead of and, you could use moreover. Instead of but, you could use however. You should avoid repeating the same word or a word from the same family within a sentence. You can repeat the word and often you should repeat a word across sentences but not within the same sentence unless it's absolutely necessary. Sentence length is also important. If you use very simple basic sentences throughout and um, this often leads to poor style. In general, students tend to be more familiar with the risks of being too informal, but this can lead them to the next problem, which is forced formality and trying to be too formal. So the first example of this is excessive nominalisation. Nominalisation basically means when you change a verb into a noun. If you do this too much, it makes the writing um, harder to follow. So an example would be, instead of saying the length increased, increased would be the verb, if that was changed into a noun, an increase, someone might write an increase in the length occurred. Another example of forced formality is choosing unnecessary wordy phrases. So for example, in order to, instead of just writing to. Another example is using showy phrases where, um, a word is, is, is picked because you think it sounds more formal. For example, initiate rather than start. This, these um, sorts of problems, in particular the normalisation, can lead to something called the distorted passive. We mentioned that passive can be good to avoid being informal, but it's also um, possible to use it um, in, a, in a bad way. For example, um, the measurement of weight was undertaken by using an anonometer. This is another example where um, a verb has been changed into a noun um, measurement has been changed into a noun. And you need to look out for words like achieved, accomplished, arrived at, performed or undertaken. And if you've used these in a sentence where you've used a passive, look out for if there's a verb that you've changed into a noun elsewhere. Again, sentence length is important. And in this case, students sometimes use um, very, very long sentences um, throughout. And again, this can just make it put quite a lot of um, strain on the reader. So what does appropriate academic style look like? It should be precise, using the exact um, technical term that you're meaning to communicate your point. It should be direct. It should be concise, not um, using more words than necessary to make a point. It should be simple in the sense that the words should be clear and it should be chosen to communicate the message as clearly as possibly, not um, to, show, to show off. And you should use a mixture of sentence lengths, both long and short, um, to, to get um, your point across. 
Here I've listed um, three resources where you can find more information, including um, lists of things like the, um, the showy words and the wordy phrases that you can avoid. Um, as said, if you want more further examples on any of these topics, then watch our other video. We'll be going into this in more detail.